Jinxi, or Red Flag, is getting access to a bigger market in the northeastern Changchun city. We'll also look at the innovations of China's auto industry in the southwest and how the electronic car industry is developing in the country's southeast. But first, let's talk to my colleagues Hui Huiao and Erica Pitsy in the northeast. Guys, we're talking cars today, and I see you got yourselves quite a sweet ride there. How's it going? <laughs> we do have a sweet ride. Welcome to the city of Chengchun, which is China's city of automobiles. So it's fitting that we are actually riding one of China's oldest brands. Yes, we are sitting in a car called Hongqi, which literally means red flag in Chinese. And it's the preferred luxury brand uh, used by government officials during big occasions like national holidays. Luxury is the key word there, yes. right? I mean, didn't Chairman Mao actually ride in a Hongqi during the parade for the founding of the PRC? Yes, he sure did. But as you know, that piece of car, of course, is the piece of history now. No right, one right, gets right. to get on it or even touch it. Probably <laughs> not, right? You can probably see it in a museum. Take a good look at it. But... Uh... Definitely keep your hands off. Yes, I love to take a look at it. <laughs> so listen, I bet you think that we are actually outside because we're in a car riding here, but we're not. We're indoors and we want to show you where we are. Yes. All right. That was a sweet ride. That was. <laughs> in a, in a so you can car. see we are in the main factory for Hongqi, based here in Chongqing. And uh, we're so lucky that it's actually a public holiday because we got this whole place to ourselves. So no workers here today, they're taking a rest, but we are getting up close and personal with these assembly lines. Yeah, look at this, this is awesome. Uh, the, this beautiful line behind us here is putting the finishing touches on the cars just before they go testing. So cool. And just to give people really an idea on the Hongqi brand, they make cars that start around 20,000 US dollars, yes, right? I believe so but they get way up there. Yes. Well, we know <laughs> that uh, the car that carries President Xi Jinping probably is worth about, what, $1 million. Oh, my goodness. Oh it's a lot of money. <laughs> I bet it's a beautiful car. But no doubt Hongqi will feature cars in the upcoming parade to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the founding of the PRC. Yes. And CGTN's reporter Hu Chao has the story for us. This is the first China-made sedan known as Hongqi. It was made by China First Automobile Workshop in 1958. The whole body of the car was shaped and assembled by hand. This is the Hongqi Car Cultural Exhibition Hall, showcasing different Hongqi cars made over the years. Those that once transported the leaders on National Day celebrations are also on display. Big changes have taken place since the brand was born. It's 61 years since the first Hongqi car was built. Now this iconic national brand is set to hit the private car market with a new fashionable look and a new advanced technology. In the past, Hongqi only had two models for sale. Since last year, they have launched four new models. And this year, sales have really taken off thanks not only to its improved look, but the advanced technology it uses. Decades ago, we were simply imitating other brands, but now China has set stricter standards for emissions and fuel consumptions than other countries. We have to make innovations. Now our self-produced engine enjoys high efficiency and low emissions. It's among the world-leading technologies. Hongqi's research and development department has largely expanded, covering Beijing and Shanghai, also Munich in Germany, and Silicon Valley in the U.S. We've been developing cutting-edge technologies in recent years, including the intelligent connected vehicle and automatic driving. They will have fast development as 5G technology develops, and we've put more and more talents in these fields. Hongqi is also putting more effort into developing new energy vehicles, Last year, it launched its first electric car, and the brand plans to raise the market share of electric cars significantly, aiming to launch 15 more types of electric vehicles by 2025. Hu Chao, CGTN, Changchun, Jilin Province.
And now we are now joined by uh, Mr. Zhang Lingzhi, Director of Hongqi Edge Series Assembly Workshop. So thank you so much for joining us. So we know as China's auto industry grows with Hongqi, uh, what are Hongqi factories doing uh, to promote this green technologies? Can you give us a look at Hongqi factories in the green technology in the green technology? 好的，今年投产的新红旗新牙机组装设计，是以打造科技品牌及品牌形象的高端设计方法，是以打造科技品牌及品牌形象的高端设计方法，是以打造科技品牌及品牌形象的高端设计方法，是以打造科技品牌及品牌形象的高端设计方法，是以打造科技品牌及品牌形象的高端设计方法，是以打造。Which is based on the reconstruction of the 40-year history of old plants. And on the floor, we have used the highly resistant polyurethane water-based coating. This is durable and environmentally friendly. We have used the white as the main color and also accompanied with a wooden color and light gray. So this is really a green workshop. Knowledge is right there. Super important too. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Zhang Jiang. All right, we've got more to talk about here. Let's head over to our colleagues, Tao Yuan and Sean Caleb, who are traveling on the Southwest route. So, guys, tell us more about the automobile and electric vehicle market where you are. Hey, guys, on the road, breaking up a little bit, but so far, doing great. Yeah, uh, Wei Ao and Erica, things are going well down here as we continue to hurdle through the Southwest part of China. And, you know, really, over the decades, and recently, uh, China had a reputation for being uh, a horrible polluter, but that has changed dramatically. Uh, in large part, the, one of the cornerstones of President Xi's government is to reduce pollution, and we're seeing that by the number of electric and hybrid cars that are on the road now. That's exactly right. In fact, last year, more electric cars were sold in China than in the rest of the world combined. The industry is right now undergoing double-digit growth. Our Xu Xinchen has more. As one of China's four largest domestic car makers, Chang'an has shifted focus to manufacturing new energy vehicles. These are vehicles with a new type power systems, such as plug-in hybrid, battery electric, or dual motor hybrid. Their efforts are not without its challenges. The difficult part of this dual motor system is how to integrate the electric driving system with the gasoline driving system. Yan says that their most advanced dual motor car only consumes less than 4 liters of gas per 100 kilometers, and some Chang'an's new energy cars can cover over 600 kilometers. While batteries are the core technology enabling new energy vehicles, car makers' efforts to build better circuits and power management systems are equally important to offer longer range and better efficiency. And the car maker plans to stop selling traditional gasoline powered cars by 2025. New energy is first a national strategy, then it is company strategy. And the end goal is to become a business model accepted by society. While the country's auto market has seen a slowdown, the opposite holds true for NEVs. Data shows that almost 650,000 NEVs were sold from January to July this year in China. That's an increase of over 50% from a year ago. As car makers' concerns over distance and charging efficiency are being addressed, China is now the world's largest market for new energy cars. In fact, battery systems are being programmed well. For example, the range per full charge can now reach 400 kilometers and charging stations are being put up within the radius that people can easily reach in many cities. The city of Chongqing, for example, plans to install 30,000 new charging poles by next year to support its goal of selling 200,000 NEVs annually. Fast charging and swappable batteries are also other technologies being developed, making the purchase of new energy vehicles more attractive. Xu Xingchen, CGTN, Chongqing. 
our reporter Xu Xinchen. So if China's experiment with electric vehicles actually succeeds, I think not just China, but the whole world is poised to take advantage of yeah, As we prepare for the 70th birthday, the founding of the People's Republic of China, uh, Erica and Wei Al, we have really seen such a cross-section of this nature, of this nation. We're about halfway done with our adventure. Back to you guys to continue the tale. No doubt. Keep uh, being safe on the roads there. Thank you, Sean and Tao Yuan. Yes, indeed. And let's now go to our colleagues, Jian Huan and Lindy. They're on the southeast of Brute. Hey, guys, how is the electric car industry developing the region? Tell us more. Well, there's been plenty of interesting developments this side. Thank you so much, Erica and Huiya. We, of course, are in Fujian province, a city called Tranjiao. And one of the big companies here is known as Contemporary Amperex Tech Limited. If you haven't heard of it, it's behind a lot of lithium ion batteries and fast moving into the space of becoming a vital player in the electric vehicle battery technology sector. Now, the Chinese government has helped out a lot by providing subsidies to companies in the electric vehicle space. And that's, of course, to encourage people to move away from fossil fuel driven cars and to the electric vehicle market. Lindy, I'm so impressed you have done a lot of research, but as you know, according to some analysts, the EV, the EV sector is facing some wet wings because the government is phasing out the subsidy. In the meantime, some international automakers are trying to get into the Chinese market. Of course, for more about China's EV ink sector, so let's bring our guests. Of course, we have Professor John Gon with the University of International Business and Economics and also Professor Lin Guochang with Jiamen University. So Professor Lin, let me start with you. So what's your assessment of China's EV markets and is this mature enough to be successful without the subsidies? No. No. I think it still needs a subsidy. Uh, it depends on how you look at it. If just from production manufacturing side, we have a very careful calculation. If the manufacturer can sell in large quantities, it's really compatible with the gasoline cars. But however, to be able to sell in large quantities with the economy of scale, you need an infrastructure, such as the battery, quality of battery, and most of charging stations. And those, at this moment, you know, it's quite difficult because with the limited number of the electric vehicles, the development in those two areas are quite weak, very slowly. Uh, so I believe that the subsidy from government is needed for those two. One is uh, supporting the technology on the on the quality of a uh, of battery, the most of charging infrastructure. So I think the subsidy in the future will be a lot more than possible compared to the subsidy what they put in in the manufacturing side at this moment. Now, what about the competition? Can China handle big companies like Volkswagen and BMW? Uh, well, first of all, the automobile industry in China is notoriously competitive. We have over 100 brands here. Mo almost all the uh, major powerhouses the, uh, in the auto sector have either manufacturers here in China. Now we have uh, Tesla have a wholly owned subsidiary here manufacturing cars here. And in addition to this, we have uh, many indigenous companies also competing in the space. Now we also have companies, new startup companies in the EV space from the internet space. They are investing money into this. So it's immensely, immensely competitive. But also, it's not just competition, it's also cooperation. I know, as we discussed earlier, that for example, Volkswagen has a very close relationship with uh, a company in Anhui province called Jianghuai, abbreviated JAC. JAC is OEM manufacturer uh, for uh, Volkswagen. They're making electric cars, and, and Volkswagen is selling these cars under the Volkswagen brand. So, you know, this is not just about a competition alone, it's a, it's a cooperation as well. But I think overall, the auto sector here in China with its huge scale. China is the largest market, 30 million cars sold every year here. With its uh, that kind of a scale and many companies involved in this, and the government behind this you know, is, a, is a part of a wholesale effort to push electric vehicle. I think uh, you know the EV sector here in China probably has a very good future. Uh, and, and it has implications for the international markets as well. Well, thank you so much to both our professors. As you heard there, the EV sector has a lot of potential here in China. And if it is the future, of course, China is a couple of miles ahead. Back to you, Erica and Huiao. Thank you so much, Jianghua and Lady. All right. And let's take...
even deeper on this topic, shall we? With our esteemed guests, Professor Li Yong, Senior Fellow of the China Association of International Trade, and Professor Benjamin Chow with the Paris School of Business. Thank you, guys. And Professor Li, too, first. Yep. Um, we know that some domestic brands have been competing with global players. Yes. What do you think would help you know, these Chinese brands to do to take things to the next level when it comes to competition? You know, a lot of things can be done, but I would like to make three suggestions. One, I think to establish core competence in engine R&D, mm -hmm. because the you know, engine is the heart of a car. Secondly, I think you know, they should work with the top-notch player of the supply chain, you know, like assembly manufacturers, you know, that will help them improve the overall performance of their car. Thirdly, I think they should adopt open attitudes in terms of innovation, you know, work with the top level design institute, for example, consulting firms and so on to develop, you know, new models of the car. And if I'm going to give you four, so it's fourth suggestion that is going to, you know, keep we're up with the trend of the new development in the new energy part of it. Be Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and to that point, let's bring in Professor Chow. So we know that electric cars are mm -hmm. getting more and more popular across the world. We've got Tesla coming in, opening a headquarters in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Certainly has an eye on the Chinese market because there is certainly a hunger there. Mm -hmm. um, but how is China actually moving forward in this particular industry when it comes to electric cars? I think the uh, Chinese uh, electric vehicle market is a great example. Uh, we just will join hands to make money together to provide good products to the Chinese market. At this stage, I think uh, we are quite reliant on the foreign firms for some core technologies such as the batteries, the engines, the control system. They're working hard on it, on some, especially uh, on the middle to lower end models. And sometimes we also have breakthroughs in other more new areas such as uh, hydro uh, vehicles. Right. Charting out new territories, basically. Absolutely, and working mm -hmm. together. And with more opening up and reform, we can get that working with global exchange on right. that. All right, yeah. thank you both. Thank you so sure. much. Sure. All right, so uh, where are we headed next? We are headed back to Beijing. Yes, that's what we're, <laughs> we're about to do. Back to you, Zhongshi. Well, and Erica, I know you enjoyed your ride in that red flag, but don't get too attached as we head back on the road in our beautiful CGTN shuttle bus. And that's our Tui Hui and Erica Pitsy in Changchun. And also thanks to our reporters on the southwest and southeast routes for bringing us the big picture of China's auto industry. And tomorrow our special series continues. Make sure you tune in that. More global news coming up next.